Harry Potter. The boy who lived. Come to die. Avada Kedavra! Suddenly the blinding lights, the ahs and the oohs, the shrieking and the distant screaming of Harry's mom screaming for him. My heart just kept to beat. Harry Potter was dead? How could he die? My whole world came crashing down like probably the stock exchange during the recession period. I couldn't believe J.K. Rowling could be this brutal to me. I was awestruck for a long, long time. Good afternoon fellow Toastmasters and my dear friends. This was exactly my reaction when I was reading Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows, that is the seventh and the final edition of the very famous series Harry Potter. In fact, I was this crazy maniac who would feel all the pain inflicted upon Harry when he was growing up. In my head, I had built a castle of dreams where I was a student of Hogwarts, that is, the school of wizardry. I was also a part of Gryffindor, that is the house where Harry belonged to. And I was also a magician. Yes, I used magic to lift objects, to fly in the air, to play air soccer and so many other things. But trust me, everything in my head. I wasn't alone in this mad and retarded behavior phase. Even my friends and me, all of us had a very common interest, that is Harry Potter. We all sat and discussed for long hours as to what the next book had in store for us. We were mad fans of Harry Potter. In our hearts we knew that Harry wouldn't die, but J.K. Rowling had probably other plans in our head. But it is due to fan pressure from people like us and from people all around the world, she was obliged. And yes, Harry became one of the most famous immortal characters. My journey with Harry Potter has left an invincible mark in my life and it has been sketched with a permanent ink in my mind. My dear friends, why do you think I have gotten up my childhood hero? What is it that I want to convey? It is the old dying habit of reading books. Why do you think I would call it a dying habit? Because all I see around me these days is Children of 12 to 13 years just Facebooking or Whatsapping or Twittering always either on their phones or their laptops. The whole culture of reading books has seemed to be lost in the glitz of glamour, uh, glitz of gizmos and gadgets. I could never imagine my childhood without books like Alice in Wonderland, Nancy Drew, Sidney Sheldon, Agatha Christie and the list is just endless. But today people think, why should I read books? All the famous books, as you can see, are made into movies. Blockbuster movies. See the movie and yes, you know the gist, what the books are all about. But, but trust me, 90% of us would agree to this one fact, that people who have read the book will never share the same experiences as seeing the movie. Because the movie is nothing compared to what the book has to offer. Reading has a joy of its own and a pleasure. Also not to forget the many benefits that reading has to offer to us. It is reading that gives us food for thought when we have nothing important to do. Let us not forget, reading is as necessary to our mind as food is for our body. It is thus one of the most wholesome hobbies and one should cultivate it as early as possible. In fact, reading books not only helps us forget our worries, it also refreshes us when clouds of sorrows darken our lives. Reading is thus fun and should be held with High esteem. I have found a few statistics which really boggled my mind. I would want to share with you. The first statistic is out of school students, if they are even spending 15 minutes of time reading on their own, they come across millions of words per year. The second statistic says that a fifth grader who is a good reader will almost read 10 times more words than a poor reader. And the most amazing and amusing fact that I found out was 42% of the college graduates have never read a book after college. In fact, this is the fact that totally took me by the accuracy. Because I was an average reader too. But after college, I have never read a book. It's not that I didn't have the time. It's just that I was just stuck up in unnecessary stuff. Now I have decided to follow a few simple steps which I will share with you too. By following these steps, you can ensure your reading habits will improve. First habit is, the first step towards reading is, pick up a book. There are books around us. There are books everywhere around us. Just pick 
one book, any book of any genre, because they come in all sizes and shapes, and you can pick any book, and you have ample of choices. The second step that you should follow is make it a part of your daily schedule. Making a part of our daily schedule compulsory for 15 minutes will ensure that slowly you're getting into the mode of reading. And the third and probably the most important factor is the comfort. Make yourself comfortable while reading a book. Whether it's the couch in your drawing, in your drawing room or whether it's the balcony or the terrace. Sit anywhere but make sure you're enjoying the moment and slowly you'll see the 15 minutes is not sufficient. This way, by following these simple steps, we will realize that reading slowly becomes an addiction, which is far better than the other forms of addiction available to us, drinking, smoking and other things. It is one of the best forms of addiction. And the benefits are your concentration level increases, your knowledge increases, your IQ level also increases. It is by far one of the most and if it is mastered properly, you'll never even complain of loneliness. Because a book only is your companion in your happy as well as sad times. There's a saying which completely summarizes what I feel and what I want to convey. A reader lives a thousand lives before he dies. A man who never reads lives only once. This was quoted by George R. R. Martin. I have decided to live a thousand lives again. The question remains, do you? What do you do?